Mighty to Save, Isaiah 63, verse 1. By the words, to save, we understand the whole of the great work of salvation, from the first holy desire onward to complete sanctification. The words are multum and parvo, much and little. Indeed, here is all mercy in one word. Christ is not only mighty to save those who repent, but he is able to make men repent. He will carry those to heaven who believe, but he is, moreover, mighty to give men new hearts and to work faith in them. He is mighty to make the man who hates holiness love it, and to constrain the despiser of his name to bend the knee before him. And this is not all the meaning, for the divine power is equally seen in the afterwork. The life of a believer is a series of miracles wrought by the mighty God. The bush burns but is not consumed. He is mighty to keep his people holy after he has made them so, and to preserve them in his fear and love until he consummates their spiritual existence in heaven. Christ's might does not lie in making a believer and then leaving him to shift for himself, but he who begins the good work carries it on. He who imparts the first germ of life in the dead soul prolongs the divine existence and strengthens it until it bursts asunder every bond of sin, and the soul leaps from earth, perfected in glory. Believer, here is encouragement. Are you praying for some beloved one? Oh, do not give up praying, for Christ is mighty to save. You are powerless to reclaim the rebel, but your Lord is almighty. Lay hold on that mighty arm and rouse it to put forth its strength. Does your own case bother you? Fear not, for his strength is sufficient for you. Whether to begin with others or to carry on the work in you, Jesus is mighty to save. The best proof of which lies in the fact that he has saved you. What a thousand mercies that you have not found him mighty to destroy. Mighty to save, Isaiah 63, verse 1.